I've been in the ELT profession now for 35 years and I've been writing materials all that time for my own classroom. Then I got a very lucky break. Um, a famous and already established ELT author asked if he could come and observe some classes uh, in my school. This was Simon Greenall. Um, he came down to the school, observed some classes, and then I showed him the worksheets that I'd made. And um, on the basis of that, he asked me to write uh, the resource packs to go alongside reward, which was the course that he was working on at the time. So that was my first pu publishing project. You asked me yeah. if I was going to write anything else. Yeah. I said, yes, I'd really like to continue writing, but I wouldn't like to do it on my own. Uh, so you offered to be my writing partner. I did, which was very <laughs> forward of me. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I accepted on the basis of um, that we got on well and I thought it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. But we also had talked a lot about we um, yeah. what we felt was missing from the market, what we thought was... Uh, we had this, the same values. We, mm. we, we, we liked the same kind of materials and mm. we, we shared... Um, the, the same ideas about what was important. How we write together is a question a lot of people ask us and uh, I always have the glib answer that Sue writes the materials and I colour in the pictures. It's not quite like that but Sue is a, is a fabulous writer and so she does uh, stage one in the process. Well stage one I suppose is we both brainstorm ideas and topics and that uh, but then Sue sets off and dirties the page. Um, and then we have something to work from but we keep uppermost in our mind I think the three principles we, we really believe in which is that the material has to be first and foremost engaging motivating we have we sometimes call these the three M's motivation is the first point you have to engage students otherwise if you if you don't do that you're nowhere so the material has to be engaging has to be motivating secondly memory uh, it has to be memorable so it has to be memorable in itself, which kind of goes with uh, motivation, but also through the course of a course book, it needs to be recycled in different ways so that the students get, you know, many, many chances to encounter the language that's being presented. And the third thing, which potentially I think we both feel most strongly, strongly about, about is yes. motivate is, is meaning, meaning. Uh, and trying to make the materials as meaningful as they can be within the confines of a classroom and I think that means for both of us using the materials to access what the students themselves bring into the classroom uh, their own thoughts their own feelings their own emotions their experiences and if we can tap into that then usually I think most teachers would agree you you've got the recipe for a mm -hmm. successful lesson so our materials hopefully are a kind of stepping stone towards accessing what the students bring into the classroom themselves. Lots of attention to meaning, lots of attention to, to motivation and lots of attention to, to memory. My favourite thing about uh, Focus is the word store. For me in Focus, uh, vocabulary is centre centr stage where it should be. Mm. It's given the importance I think it deserves mm. and we open each unit with a vocabulary spread um, where the students first see the new vocabulary contextualised uh, and then through carefully uh, staged exercises they are encouraged to look at the form and meaning of the words and store them in the uh, word store which is attached to the to the cover mm -hmm. of the of, of the book yeah. so um, and then they come back to exercises to practice the new vocabulary which is then personalized and that's when it becomes meaningful mm. to the students yeah. so um, i'm very proud of the way the um, the vocabulary store works the recording of the vocabulary is is quite a, a key area um, all books present vocabulary all books uh, practice vocabulary um, some books better than others um, but the idea of paying attention to how you store it and giving students in a way um, it's almost like a, a mini syllabus strand of different ways of recording vocabulary so they're not just writing things down and putting a translation next to it they're putting them into diagrams they're filling out tables they're doing all sorts of different ways of storing vocabulary which is good and the other thing i would say is that yeah. vocabulary isn't just um, limited to that 
vocabulary spread in the unit because uh, all the pages have words on them as they would do and so we've tried to follow that theme through so that students don't just see the vocabulary spread as the one where they are doing the vocabulary but they also see that other spreads even though their focus might be on listening or grammar or reading they're still very very rich resources for vocabulary. Building up a vocabulary through the book is, is a very strong part and I think both it's of us given are... given great importance. Yeah.